Hey folks, my name is Jeremy Schuyler, host of a show here on X-Ray called Punk House. I'm on every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, playing a little bit of post-punk, new wave, no wave, and its enduring legacy, as it were. Um, we're here tonight uh, with yet another one of our house shows, which uh, have been a lot of fun and certainly a great way for us to uh, bring people together in a time that we're all sort of apart um, in one way or another, quite literally, and also uh, in some ways, maybe uh, more than that. Um, you know, uh, our mission here at X-Ray is to hold a microphone to the most distinct and best of Portland and beyond. In some cases, uh, like with our guests this evening, some of which have been Portland residents in the past, now living in various locations, uh, but still continuing to make great music and embody the spirit of what we find to be so special about this town we are lucky enough to live in. And for those of you who don't live here, lucky enough to hopefully feel a part of what makes this place just so magical. Um, so as I mentioned, our house show series, uh, tonight we have two very special guests. Uh, the idea again is to bring you live music uh, in a time when you frankly can't go out and see it. Um, and also to support um, artists uh, in a time that they can't play live shows and uh, may be struggling to uh, make ends meet as uh, many of us may be. Um, as I've talked about many times on my show in particular, uh, one great way to do that is to go to Bandcamp. Um, Bandcamp is doing some pretty interesting things uh, once a month where they're waiving their fees and giving all of the money to the artists and the labels that are releasing music there, many of whom are choosing to uh, donate a portion of that to some very worthwhile causes, and there are certainly many of them right now. Uh, that said, with this particular series, what we're doing, uh, we've got some great sponsors that I want to give thanks to right now. We've got Wanamaker Estate Vineyards, of course, our home of the Falcon Art Community, Brian Wanamaker and Dave Dahl, who have worked with us to not only uh, put together a pretty great giveaway uh, for those of you who actually make a donation this evening, uh, but also to ensure that our artists who are performing this evening and at every one of our house shows are paid for their time. As I mentioned, this is a time that's challenging um, for uh, folks who make their living making music to do that. So uh, we think this is a pretty special way uh, to actually um, bring people together in a time uh, like now and give them an experience that they might otherwise not be able to have and pay everybody, which is great. Um, so that said, um, you'll see on actually the bottom of your screen right now, there is a link which will send you right to uh, where you can make a donation this evening. In addition to that, uh, I want to mention that uh, the proceeds from tonight's donations are going to two great causes, the N -day, the excuse me, the NAACP and Don't, Don't Shoot Portland, both of whom uh, certainly could use our support right now, if not always, but more than ever. Um, so with that said, um, do consider donating this evening. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. For those tonight we are going to be giving away uh, a special uh, giveaway to one person selected from our donors tonight from the Wanamaker Estate Vineyards, one of our sponsors this evening. So not only are you giving uh, to good causes, you might get some great wine. And certainly I would say as we're all trapped at home, we all could use a little bit of that as well. Uh, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and introduce tonight's uh, two performers. Uh, first up, we have Popular Music, who are just about set to release their debut LP. Uh, this band uh, features, again, as I mentioned, a Portland alumni, Portland alumni, Zach Pennington of the band Parenthetical Girls, uh, who were very active here for quite some time, uh, as well as Prudence Reese Lee, who makes music in her own right. And the two of them have come together to do something pretty special and pretty unique. Uh, following that, we'll talk with uh, the two of them uh, from their home in upstate New York, and then we will go to Chicago, Illinois, where we will see former Portlander uh, Cassia Tone for the Painfully Alone, now advanced bass Owen Ashworth. So with that said, let's hear from popular music now. <laughs> Not far 
This group is popular music. We're coming to you uh, from upstate New York, uh, where we live um, in this uh, 19th century barn that uh, we affectionately refer to as the sanitarium. Uh, this is our first show. Thank you for being here. Thank you uh, to X-Ray and Advanced Space for having us. Uh, that was a song by um, Ray Davies and the Kinks. Uh, We'll be playing songs from our forthcoming full-length album, which is called Popular Music Plays in Darkness, um, which is a collection of songs uh, from cinema. That, mo that was in a movie called Percy, which is really quite bad. Um, and the next song is uh, by Angelo Badalamenti and Marianne Faithful.
next song is uh, a cover of a song by Neil Young, um, uh, which was previously also recorded by the group Advanced Bass, who will be performing uh, ra 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 relatively soon after us. Uh, I think that ours is sadder.
thank you. The name of this group was Popular Music from sweltering upstate New York. Advanced Space is next. All right, so we are back after that uh, amazing set from Popular Music, recorded in their home beautifully, I might add. Uh, even an appearance of a family pet, which I feel like all of us uh, see in some regard. My cat is seated here next to me. He appeared on my show last week. Um, all of you could hear him rubbing himself on the microphone for those of you who uh, who happen to listen in. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Jeremy Schuyler. Uh, I do a show here on X-Ray called Punk House. If you're just tuning in, I am on every Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, and... Uh, very happy uh, to be here this evening. Again, as a reminder, before we get into uh, speaking to the folks behind popular music, that uh, you can donate now. Tonight's causes, again, are the NAACP and uh, Don't Shoot Portland. Um, and for those of you who do make a donation, um, we are going to be doing a giveaway, compliments of one of our sponsors, Wanamaker Estate Vineyards. Speaking of uh, folks who seem like they're living on some sort of palatial estate in upstate New York, uh, I am joined now by uh, the two folks behind popular music whom you've just heard from. Uh, welcome, Zach and Prudence. Hi. Hi. So very nice to have you both on here. Um, big fans of uh, everything that, that you have done um, here at X-Ray. Uh, myself certainly included. Zach, I've been lucky enough to see you perform many, many times over the years uh, when you were still here in Portland, um, which is kind of the lead into uh, you know, the questions I'm gonna ask you all. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for being here. It's um, our pleasure, thank you. Uh, I wanna say, so first of all, Zach, the big question, what, what drove you away from Portland? Why, why did you leave Portland? Oh, wow. <laughs> I miss you. You were a huge creative force in this city for such a long time. I didn't know this gonna be gotcha. I'm just winter. kidding, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, uh, I lived in Portland for a decade and um, I, it felt at the time like it was a good idea. Sure. I don't know if I, if I would make the same, just make the same choice now. Uh, with hindsight, I really miss Portland a lot actually, um, but yeah. It's, it seems like a lot of things were kind of coming to a close for you in that time. You were wrapping up what, what you had been doing with Parenthetical Girls for such a long time with that last album, yeah. um, which I know that you had kind of said at the time was just sort of a realization that um, it was over, even though you weren't necessarily aware in that moment that that was going to be the last album. Um, so kind of with that said, I want to talk a little bit about um, both of your uh, sort of of current and past projects. Um, so you met in LA where uh, you had been living post Portland and Prudence where you first came to the States. Um, what was it about uh, making music together that, uh, that sort of made sense? And was that something that kind of started in LA and then really kind of became realized when you made your way out to upstate New York? Or was that something that really has kind of taken shape uh, since you've been out where you are now? I mean we started when we were in LA and I guess the appeal was we just had very similar tastes like I remember we we've both done things like gotten real harpsichords for our previous albums and right. we've both covered one of the same songs and you know like we had all just all these little um touchstones I guess in common so it made a lot of sense to work on things together we actively avoided it for a long right. time yeah <laughs> inevitably right yeah. yeah yeah and well yeah I yeah that's it. Mm -hmm. but um yeah it definitely started in LA uh but we kind of have gotten really into it out here with the time and space that we have here to do things yeah so. of course yeah and uh so Zach prior or, uh after uh, parenthetical girls uh you had done some other projects, most notably uh, Comedienne. Um, is that something that you're going to be continuing with or will that kind of fold into uh, to what you all are doing now with popular music? Um, I, I, it kind of remains to be seen. I think, um, I know that a lot of this, we're, we'll, we'll be working, we're working on a new album right now um, that has folded in some of those songs. 
Um, and I'm not sure if everything will eventually become popular music. Um, I mean, everything will eventually become popular music. <laughs> it's an interesting statement. In terms yeah. Of <laughs> um, yeah, so with that said, this first album, um, which releases this week, correct? Actually, the the full album is isn't going to come out um, until September. Oh, okay. uh, the we have a new single coming out this week. Oh, okay, uh, great. We've been like very, very slowly unveiling the this this the this like kind of too slowly at this point. Yeah. yeah, I would argue it's been masterful. I mean, I think that kind of <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing better than uh, I feel like kind of that sort of soft role, especially um, you know with the kinds of music that you're making. Um, you know, there is a certain dramatic aspect to it. I mean, a it's uh, you know film scores uh, up until now. Um, which, you know, naturally there's inherent drama in that on some level. Um, but then also just kind of, I feel like um, you've really taken great advantage of kind of the platforms uh, that music is released now with um, really thoughtful, uh, you know, art for each of the individual singles and, and things like that. How uh, was this kind of a conscious uh, kind of decision in terms of how you're rolling it out or is it just kind of taken shape as you've it gone along? It was conscious. Yeah. Um, both of us are not quite sure how things work anymore. Um, right. So we're, we're trying to learn how. No one is. Right, yeah, <laughs> yeah how to do things, you know, in, in, with streaming and everything like that. Uh, and this was the advice that we had. <laughs> I feel like so every single conscious. time that, at least that I've released things, and I think in, sim in a similar way for you, Prudence, it's like, we it ends up being like an experiment and you just kind of go mm. whole force into it like sure i'm gonna release five 12 inch eps over the course of right. two years and like maybe that'll work yeah. uh so it's kind yeah. of yeah i don't know it's glad i'm glad to hear that you think it's good. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I <laughs> what, and, and you know, that leads me to kind of my next question. I mean, you have picked some excellent scores um, thus far that you've unveiled. Um, as I mentioned to you before we came on, um, you know, Wicker Man, I actually rewatched recently uh, since we've all been kind of in quarantine and that film still, I mean, is, it's, it's, a, it's yeah. Um, and uh, that soundtrack is one of my all time favorites um, with, okay. With going into the film scores, how uh, how have you decided upon um, the songs that you've chosen to cover? And has it changed the way you watch movies? I mean, are you even really watching films anymore without, you know, deciding what's going to be the next uh, beautifully uh, released and uh, designed single? It's funny. I was just thinking when you said how great Wicker Man is, and it is. And I feel like it's one of the few films that we've chosen where the film and the song a kind of equal caliber. Absolutely. A few of the other films we've chosen, the the movies that may be like just so ter terrible, but they'll have a song in them that just kind of like is doesn't belong. I'm yeah. thinking of the way sure. love yeah. which yeah, the, yes. I mean it's like definitely got its own no it does it doesn't thing. have its own charm. It's got its no. own thing going. <laughs> it's terrible. And yeah. So we, we both like had the very we like when we start, when we decided we were actually going to go through with this, like this idea, we like, there's a list of like, we have another mm. full record worth of records oh, wow. we would like to do. And this mm. is just, we, these were the ones that just came out as, as the quickest. Mm. But like now people send us, like friends of ours send mm. us, like you really should do, like a friend of mine recently sent me a link to, um, there's a, a, a Big Bird movie you, that, oh. that uh, the, there's a movie that was made in the 80s that was um what is it called it's like oh, i can't remember what it's called oh that's so bad but there's this like devastating song where that big bird sings oh, wow. <laughs> it's like i they were my friend was like yeah this is this is it, this is it. And, <laughs> and he was right. he was absolutely right <laughs> yeah, oh that's so. amazing i guess you were really looking for stand-up songs follow that bird yeah. sorry oh. follow that bird is what it's called <laughs> anyway that's it. Yeah, follow that bird. Yeah. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> well, and you, you've definitely, I feel like obviously there's kind of a, a sort of a somber tone to a lot of the songs that you're choosing and um, certainly a very orchestral nature to them. 
which um, you know, they're all sort of very grand on their own, but then you've, you've done an excellent job of really kind of making them your own. Um, do you feel like, uh, again, we're all sort of uh, living in isolation and I know that you started this project before now, uh, does location play any sort of role in kind of the influence of, of the music you're making? Or do you feel like the vision was kind of there and the location just happened to be, it's like painting the bullseye around the arrow as it were. Mm. I think it's a bit of both. I mean, it's like you mentioned that they've got a very strong baton. Um, I mean, that, that was- I think that, that well, I think it, I, I, LA being in LA really certainly played a big part in this the the, the way that we the, the moving forward with this project because sure. it's it like the sort of illusory, illusory nature to being in Los Angeles right. um, and then just like this magical promise of film but it's yeah. always kind of unattainable so right. like the kind of themes that emerged throughout these songs and the through lines kind of presented themselves I guess to us as we were yeah doing working on it like just the idea that there's somewhere else that you could be or this kind of yearning or longing which you get in film or just like the idea of going to the movies where you're just sitting in darkness for two hours, like looking at this light. And then we just did it for real and yeah. moved somewhere, I guess. Right. Yeah. Kind of how it went. I mean, I guess all of it kind of is wrapped up in the idea of escapism, like one way or another, like going to LA was a, was a escapist for everyone who goes. yes for everyone who goes there <laughs> exactly yeah uh, film in la is pure mm. escapism and then running away from la is also escapism mm. <laughs> what's interesting though i will say is that um you know when uh when you release that first video i mean the majority of the, the footage was made up of uh, videos that you had been sent by people correct mm. um, right. and which is kind of an interesting I found that to be kind of personally something that was uh, quite beautiful, this idea that you were taking, um, you know, a soundtrack to film and, and something that has that level of escapism, but putting in the context of people's mm -hmm. lives. So it's almost like kind of flipping that concept on its head um, in a way that it almost comes full circle and becomes escapism again for someone like me, who it's not my life I'm looking at, um, but instead kind of peering into someone else's um, with the soundtrack uh, like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, with that said, uh, so you you have a new album. How many uh, tracks are going to be on this album in total? It's 12. It's really excessively long. The record, like, can't mm -hmm. fit on a single LP. It's very long, and we can't cut anything. Because <laughs> 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 the double LPs are quite pricey. Yeah, but, um, yeah for sure. Oh, yeah, it's a lot. Is there, I mean, uh, so you do have plans to release the album on vinyl eventually? Uh, we're eventually, eventually, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but you had mentioned the, the actual album itself will be available in September, yes, yeah, awesome. Yep. And then in terms of new tracks being released from the, the album, um, tomorrow, uh, what track are you releasing tomorrow? Uh, Willow's song from The Wicker Man is tomorrow. Oh, fantastic. And then next month, well, I guess I don't want to say. Next month is a surprise. Yeah. Oh, and that's great. And then the album will actually come out. And then, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then, you'll, then they'll all be out there. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And then the world will be open again and you'll go on tour, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 It'll, ha it'll happen just that easily, I'm sure. <laughs> Good timing. Yeah. With that said, um, you know, in a in a context where you could perform these songs live and not just uh, by way of in your uh, in your home, um, do you envision this as a live experience or is this uh, strictly a home recording project for you in the long term? Oh, we definitely wanted to play them live. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was the goal. That is the goal. Yeah. We're still. Yeah. Trying to work out how to do that. Yeah. Um, kind of an extension of where I was working with the comedian project. Um, it, the idea of like having, um, like marrying um, like small string ensemble with with keyboards and and drum right. machines. That's kind of the the dream as soon as we can actually leave our house. Yeah, of course, right. Well, you know, with that said, um, you know, another question kind of related to that. Um, as you move into potentially 
creating original music uh, that is wholly your own. How, how does that affect um, your individual musical pursuits? You know, we talked about Comedian already. Uh, Prudence, you put out a record uh, just last year. Um, are you continuing to write sort of together uh, and separately or, or how is that working for the two of you as you collaborate? I feel like we do a kind of songwriting together. Like, so the things we're working on that are songs um, are kind of getting funneled into popular music a mm. bit if, they're, if they feel right. And then for me, the stuff that I'm working on separately is more instrumental and more kind of arrangement and orchestral thing. Uh, yeah, and I'm just kind of chipping away at that. <laughs> and, um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know. I, th I feel like it's important to kind of maintain separate identities as well. Mm, uh, of course. Together. Yeah. So. It's like keeping your record collection separate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. something I've still never figured out how to, uh, how to do in all the years. <laughs> but I know. Um, so actually, you know, uh, you haven't had that awkward moment then where, you know, someone comes in from the other room and you're working on an idea and it's like, no, we should do that together. It's like, no, this is mine. <laughs> No, we have that a lot. It's just always gets funneled into popular music. Yeah, I, th yeah. I feel like it's... if someone is like, oh, I like that, then it's like, okay. I just, <laughs> yeah, I just work on all the rejects on my own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's gone. laughs> so, um, yeah. That's great. Um, well, uh, tell uh, everyone as we, you know, wrap up and move on to uh, our next guest this evening, um, where can uh, people find your music now? for those who are hearing you for the first time? Um, uh, All the usual channels. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Spotify, uh, Bandcamp. Yeah, this is popular music at Bandcamp, or the Bandcamp is this is popularmusic.bandcamp.com. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess yeah. you can just go to our website, which is popularmusic.ltd. That's awesome, fantastic. I was well, gonna Google it, but it's actually kind of a difficult one. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> It's actually, for that same reason, great to hear you uh, talk about it um, when you're sort of talking in third person of things getting funneled into popular music or everything. <laughs> music. Um, every, every album title is a pun. It's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I work in marketing. I, I love a good pun like nobody else. Believe me. <laughs> Um, so with that said, I want to thank you both so much for being here and, and for performing this evening. It was really fantastic uh, speaking with you. And perhaps maybe I can uh, call upon you again to uh, maybe come by Punk House sometime and, and, and chat I'd some love more. That. Yeah. Awesome. Don't, I, donate, please, everyone. Yes, yes. As a, as a reminder, uh, anyone who is watching this right now, please do uh, click on that link. You can find it right at the bottom. You can also find it in the comments. Um, whether you're watching at Facebook Live or on YouTube. Um, again, all of tonight's proceeds are going to the NAACP and uh, Don't Shoot Portland, both very worthy causes. And uh, I think ones that everyone involved in tonight's broadcast can certainly get behind. Um, again, Zach and Prudence, thank you so much for being here and, and best of luck with everything. I'm really excited to, uh, to check out um, the what comes after tomorrow what what that surprise track is and i can't wait to hear the album so thank you Thanks. all right with that said um we will uh say goodbye to our guests uh up in upstate new york where it's much much later who uh you guys can change into your pjs and, <laughs> and head on into head on into the evening uh for those of you uh here in portland or wherever you may be watching uh up next we are joined by advanced bass uh owen ashworth uh, long running project of his formerly known as Cassia Tone for the Painfully Alone. Um, it's hard for those projects not to blend together a little bit because it's been one guy the whole time, um, though they are separate. Um, so uh, with that said, uh, coming up next, you can see Advanced Bass. Hi, it's me, Owen from Advanced Bass. Thanks for coming out tonight. Is it okay if I pretend this is a regular show? Um, thanks for thanks for being here, everyone. Um, even though it's beautiful outside and traffic is terrible, I hope you found a good parking spot. Um, thanks to Popular Music for playing. We're on tour together. Had a terrible drive from uh, Anchorage. Just barely made it for sound check. 
Um, I'm going to wait till the bartender stops dumping that bucket of ice, and then I'll start playing. Denise, can I get more vocals in my monitor, please? Um, most of the songs I'm playing tonight are requests. The last one wasn't. That was just for me. That was my request. It was called David Allen. This next song is called The Only Other Girl from Back Home. It was requested by Jonathan. Plastic bags strewn in the yard. Well, I'd go and get it, a bottle of wine. But I'm pretty sure that they caught. The Lansing is ugly, it smells like a bus. But it's better than where we came from. And you're the only girl I can talk to. You're the only other girl from back home. got a job, you got me one too, we hated a job, it's pretty bad, but there was this one boy we both thought was cute, this Hesher dishwasher named Chad, 
And I took him home, knowing you liked him first. You cut me out on the phone. Now you won't even talk to me. You're the only other girl from back home. Thanks.
just can't see your kids anymore. That night after closing, we opened up some good champagne. We slow danced to. Thanks. Uh, my uh, six-year-old daughter's been taking piano lessons over Zoom, like this. Um, I'm learning a new song every week. And this last week, she asked if I would teach her one of my songs, and she never asked her. I said, sure. So I taught her this next song, just the piano part. Um, but. She's been practicing it a bunch, and some mornings I've woken up to hear her playing the song on the piano, and it's amazing. I fully recommend the experience if you get a chance to teach a six-year-old one of your songs and then have her play it as you're waking up in the morning. The song's called Summer Music.
sound of music from the kitchen boombox.
Thanks. In memory, you're 17, and your boyfriend's a kind of light at the auditorium. Treasure and his favorite jeans, his hair is long and smelling good, the music loud and when he looks into your eyes, he was true love. I want to say thanks to um, X-Ray FM for inviting uh, Pipe Music and myself to do the show. It's a real pleasure to play for y'all. 
Um, thanks for tuning in. Um, X-Ray FM asked if I would do a and a as part of the show. So I asked if there are any questions on social media. And a couple people replied. So I'm going to answer some questions real quick. Okay. Peg asks, which came first? Your animation art or your music art? Um, I've made a couple of animated videos for Casio Tone. Rather, I guess there weren't any Casio Tone songs. So there are a couple animated videos for advanced bass songs. It was Our Cat and uh, Answering Machine. And I didn't start messing with animation until um, my mom gave my kids an iPad that had an animation program on it. So I just started messing with that five or six years ago. But I've drawn pictures for as long as I've done music and before that. Um, but I've always, one thing I've liked about doing music is making my own art for records and t-shirts and things like that. So I've always drawn, but animation came after music. Okay. Hope that answers your question. Sean asks, what are some of your favorite collections of short stories? Um, I love short stories. Uh, Self-Help by Laurie Moore is probably um, uh, the one I've read the most times through. Um, it's a book that I've bought for several friends over the years. All of Laurie Moore's short stories are great, but Self-Help's a special one for me. Um, there's a Bobby Ann Mason collection called Shiloh and Other Stories that I'm also really crazy about. That story Shiloh is fantastic. Um, Shirley Jackson's short stories, I love the collection that has the lottery in it. I think it's just called The Lottery and Other Stories. That's great. That was a, probably a pretty big influence on my songs. As was Raymond Carver and his short stories. Um, the collection called What We Talk About When We Talk About Love is probably my favorite of his. So. That's some books with short stories in them. Um, Kay asks, what comes first, music or lyrics when writing? Um, probably needs to be some kind of music for me to decide to make something into a song. I do, sometimes I have ideas for words that will just stay in a notebook or become some other kind of writing project if I don't have some kind of melody or a musical idea that kind of pushes the words in the direction of being music. So I'd say music has to come first for me. Um, okay, Todd asks, any chance you'd play You and Me in the Moon, which is a magnetic field song that I've covered before. And Todd, yes, I can play that song. I'll do it right now.
inside and the sound of your voice and the shivers of my spine and not the slightest touch and love you and me and the world. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You and me and the moon. This is another cover song that was requested by Jonathan. It's a John Prine song called Unwed Fathers. songs. It's another request. The song is called Pamela. Yeah, 
was 17. Dumbass and drum machine. Star and a gold. On a chain at his throat. So there's sitting mescaline. But even the leaves clean. Studio apartment somewhere near, somewhere far away from here. How does it feel? Are you lonesome? Now you've got first chair, but a broken heart won't mend when your cello's your only friend. Doesn't matter what they're paying you, Edith won't. And when you're sitting in the spotlight, a standing ovation every night, does it occur to you that something isn't right? When you're kissing someone new But you know that your heart's not through With the last boy Do you say to yourself This'll do, this'll do Cause you can hide in the cinema You got the money to spend But the movies always in and then it's your life again and you can practice all day long to the notes are perfect but your heart's all wrong and callous fingers won't make you strong Edith Warren Thanks. All right, folks, I'm going to do one last song. Um, happy to have had the chance to spend this time with you. Thanks a lot for listening. Mm. 
This song is called Kitty Wind. We got married in September. The baby came the next December. So I got off of the road. It's the longest I've been home since I remember. Wake up early these days to dress the kid and fix her eggs. Then we'll walk down to the park if it's nice out. There's a swing set where she plays.
recognize a kitty when from the panic and needle part of Al Pacino she played his girlfriend seen an old friend The way I'd wondered where she'd been Is it sad and pet the cat With my wife's head on my lap On the sofa In the den You won't see me around I've got a family now Thanks a lot. All right, I want to thank everyone here tonight for joining us. Uh, I want to thank Advanced Bass and Popular Music for being here this evening. Um, if you are just tuning in, uh, this has been one of X-Ray FM's house shows. Uh, these are meant to both give us uh, something to bring us all together under our shared love of music uh, and also a way for musicians to continue continue per to perform and also uh, to make a little bit of money um, by way of our generous sponsors for this and all events. Those sponsors, again, Wanamaker Estate Vineyards, our home at the Falcon Art Community, Brian Wanamaker and Dave Dahl. We want to thank them all for, um, again, making this possible. And uh, for those of you who did donate this evening, uh, there is a chance that you may have won a uh, gift package uh, from Wanamaker Estate Vineyards, um, so uh, feel good about that. And also, more than anything, feel good about um, contributing to two good causes. Tonight, our uh, acts have chosen the NAACP and then also Don't Shoot Portland. Um, all of the proceeds from tonight event, tonight's event will be going to those two organizations. As a reminder, that link, if you are discovering this after the fact, um, and not watching in real time, that link is still live and that money will still go to two very worthy causes. Um, for those of you who uh, don't know me, my name again is Jeremy Schuyler. I do a show here on X-Ray on Mondays from 6 to 8 p.m. called Punk House Radio. Uh, I have been a part of this station since the very beginning. And I wanna take a quick moment to thank everyone, not only for tuning in tonight, but for those who participated in our recent fund drive. We went into that fund drive with a lot of uncertainty um, as many things in the world. And you all really showed up for us and uh, made us feel very good uh, about what we're doing uh, in supporting this station and the mission behind it. Again, if you're not a regular X-Ray FM listener, you can find us at 107.1 and 91.1 FM in Portland, and we stream online at xray.fm. All of us uh, here are volunteers. We all put in our time for a love of the music and the mission. And uh, I wanna thank all of the staff and uh, everyone who puts this program and all of the uh, various programs that we do on a regular basis together. Uh, with that said, I bid you all a good evening. Thank you again for tuning in. I said with that said one last time, just for my wife, if she happens to be listening downstairs. Um, and for those of you, uh, come find me at 6 p.m. on Monday and I hope that you enjoyed this evening's events. Go to Bandcamp and support both of these artists at thisispopularmusic.bandcamp.com and Advanced Bass, B-A-S-E, dot bandcamp.com. Again, thank you all so much and have a wonderful evening. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane, and stay the F away from each other. Thanks again.
It's time to wake up. Nobody likes to hear those words, right? We all want to sleep just a little bit longer. A new day can be as daunting as it is exciting. Five years ago, we started X-Ray FM, a radio station driven by purpose and community. X-Ray shared some of Portland's trademark quirkiness. It seemed like fun. And it has been fun. We played music, discussed the news, and won a few prizes. We've highlighted some wonderful people and done some beautiful and stupid stuff. The weather's gotten warmer in five years. Reading the news has become a chore. Our quirky city has changed too. Or maybe the hard parts just became more obvious to those of us who have the privilege to ignore them. And these days, it doesn't feel like we're doing nearly enough. We're proud of what's been built. Grateful to our community. Even a bit amazed we still exist. But the stakes have changed. Radio isn't something that most people think about these days. It's something we listen to in the car as we rush from place to place. It's how we discover a new local band. Kick off our heels after work. Or share a moment of anger at something f***ed up in the news. One person's voice can impact the world. It can spark a fire, inspire change. A voice can spread a message across a city, a country, or from one generation to the next. We want to give people a voice. Through radio and podcasts. Playlists and partners. Live sessions and videos. We want to highlight the moving, the silly, the insightful, the challenging, and the beautiful. Things you'll love, and probably some things you won't. We want to create and help others create. We want to give a microphone to the musicians who fuel our souls. Who wants a revolution where you can't dance? We want to strengthen our community. One of the things we've loved about Portland is that you don't need to be rich to belong or be fashionable to fit in. It's a place where the activist can be cooler than the consumer. We want to give voice to those values. So we hope you'll join us for the next five years. Be part of our band of artists and activists and misfits who make our place special. Because at X-Ray, you belong.